Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, we were discussing, we were actually discussing some stuff Jackie's been working on on the side of uh, uh, interfacing with Android phones, and it reminded me of the whole um, uh, working with screens, and, the, and, and we were talking about VPNs as well, and I thought, you know, I, I see this question a lot, um, is with auto hotkey, how do you automate um, stuff over like a VPN or a Citrix connection where you log into a computer, a remote computer, and then what can you do with that? Um, and, and the short answer is what, Jackie? It depends is, is probably my best answer. Uh, but if you have no control or no real access to the remote computer, then you're of course limited because you can't really get commands from your computer to the computer on the other end. And um, when, when we talk about different ways of automating a window, a lot of times when you move away from moving the mouse and, and win activate, win wait active and, and those commands and, and move into at least the more intermediate ones where you might send clicks to controls or you use control set text or mm -hmm. other things like that. Most people would expect to be able to do that uh, on, on let's say a Citrix connection. And the thing with Citrix and, and most likely with Google Remote and TeamViewer and all of those different tools for that is that what they're really doing is they're rendering a, a visual representation of what's on the other end. It's not really building an interactive window. It's just drawing a 2D uh, surface um, of, of what's seen. Um, so you can move your mouse just fine and you can click it. And what the program then does is it doesn't say interact with that control here. No, it's just actually just telling the windows on the other end that, oh, the mouse is currently at this location and a click event happened. So it's all done on the remote computer. So auto hotkey tells the Citrix window, I'm clicking here. The Citrix window then passes that along to the remote computer and says something click here and then the remote computer will decide what to do with that. So there, there are a couple of um, intermediaries and the Citrix one is just a 2D surface that takes um, mouse click and keyboard events and passes them over to the OS on the other end. So there's no real connection. Um, and that's why you're just clicking on an image, yeah. so to speak. There's, there's and no depth. if you are fortunate enough to actually be able to have access to that remote computer, you could possibly get auto hockey installed on it and then, but then, you know, all the development would still have to be done. Boy, it'd be hard to, to develop that from your Citrix connection. Uh, you could do it though, right? But it would be much harder than actually working on that system. And um, Yeah, and, and there, are, there are different other uh, limitations because the Citrix connection, the user or the, the privileges that you have while loaded in remotely are not the exact same as being there physically. They might be similar or stuff like that. Or, or if you send a key command and your, your usual thing is that when I click control shift alt uh, F6, whatever that might be, uh, some kind of extreme combination, right? If the secure connection you have, your VPN, your remote, whatever software, if that doesn't pass that along in a way so that the 
board hooks or whatever uh, the way your script on the robot computer is set up to listen for, then you don't actually have the ability to um, activate whatever you have on the remote computer. Yeah, yeah I, I can't tell you how many times, I and mean, we've run into it in the webinars too, right? Where uh, you'll be controlling my computer and you, you go to hit a hotkey and it won't send it, Zoom will eat it up and doesn't send it through, right? And, yeah. and each system's different. And besides the permissions, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, but yeah, and that, yeah, anyway, so, so unfortunately, you know, and I, actually I was thinking about this because um, I, I kind of remember if I actually recorded this, I sure feel like I did. But um, at one point I was talking to Tank about it and that, you know, the, the VAT, hmm. a lot of the tools out there, RPA tools you're paying a lot of money for, you know, more often than not, when they are automating a tool, they're looking at images and they're not sending control clicks and they're not doing it unless it's like maybe, maybe with Calm and Excel or something. I, I think they, they can see some of the guts of that. But um, a lot of times they're sending image, you know, looking for an image and clicking it and looking at this and clicking it, but it's images. And uh, it's kind of funny because, you know, you and I are always saying like, oh, please don't ever send, you know, send uh, clicks if you can avoid it. Um, but having said that, like, this is where auto hockey, st everyone, no matter what, right? There's no way it workarounds because you're not actually connected to that computer. You're, you're connected to the computer screen, not the computer, so to speak. Yeah, so, so all that deep data or behind the scenes data is there, you kind of have that, window screen between what you're doing and what's actually happening. So yeah, you you can point at stuff, but you can't actually touch it. So yeah. that that's kind of the limitation there are there is there. Now when I was at TI, we, we had a Citrix, but I could I could highlight stuff on my work computer from home and copy it and the clipboard was shared. So that that was that does give you some possibilities because if that's not shared boy you're really in for a hard battle yeah and and i know from from a lot of my colleagues that the one of the c2 connections or the versions that we use at one point is if i open let's say excel on the remote computer using our Citrix connection, it will open a window that looks exactly like Excel on mine. Just look like Excel. Mm -hmm. So I have Excel open, I'm working, I wanna save it. I usually save it in my documents folder as an example. And I go to the documents folder and I save it. And then in five minutes, I'm kind of like, okay, I'll go to my documents folder and I can't find it because I'm looking in my local documents yeah. folder because I just saved it to the documents folder. Yeah. Um, not, uh, I, I do understand it. So I don't remember that happening in a long time, but I still get uh, people who don't yeah. know the difference uh, between what is on the remote computer and what is on their local computer. Yeah. Um, I can I can do you one better, Jackie, because at, at, at TI, I could have at the time, not always, but it, for most of the time there, I could have Dropbox installed. And, exactly. and I think, you know, I put my desktop under Dropbox and all of those folders that you see on like my right, my shortcuts, those are all under Dropbox. And so then my work computer looks identical to my home computer. And so I'd be remoting into my work computer, which looks just like my home computer. And, and you know, and even what was great was that the shortcuts for a lot of the stuff was the same. So because the shortcuts to all the nested folders, those were all in a Dropbox too. So it didn't matter which computer I was on because it all synced to the same place. However, the, um, the, like your, the, uh, the actual, actually the desktop was still the same too, but your, my documents, that would be different. Thankfully I almost never used that, but it yeah. would get really confusing of like, I swear I just saved this. Like, oh yeah, that's that's actually the other computer genius. <laughs> we're we're using uh, SharePoint and, and uh, at least some of my colleagues who are working a lot in, in Word documents and, and work about descriptions and whatever and whatnot. Um, I have synchronized 
a specific folder from SharePoint onto their local uh, drive. So they feel more um, at home in File Explorer than they uh -huh. do in, in SharePoint Online. So by synchronizing those, they will go to the File Explorer, find the folder, open the Word document, and Word opens with that mm -hmm. document. Instead of all the oh, man. browser version and stuff, yeah. they're very happy about that. Yeah. But then they're at home, they connect in via Citrix, they are actually on a remote computer where nothing is, because <laughs> there's nothing shared there. Yeah. So now they can't totally find yeah. the yeah. item from when they open Excel, because yeah. Excel is looking at the remote right. computer's files. And right. So yeah. It's, yeah something that was supposed to make it easier for them are also giving them headaches from time to yeah. time. Yeah. If awesome. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's yeah. go ahead and wrap this one up. I think that that's a good, uh, you, you can still do stuff, but it's very limited in what you can do. Um, unless you can get access to that remote computer. And even then you can't, you can do stuff, but it's just the development might be a little difficult because unless you physically can be there, it's just, it'll be slower developing it. Yeah, I'd say newer versions of VPNing or, or making secure tunnels where you're, we, we did this, uh, that here in doing the Corona crisis, uh, having a um, uh, VPN connection to your actual work uh, uh, network. So I could be at home on my Wi-Fi, but my work computer would still uh, work and interact exactly as if it had been uh, at work, right? That yeah. that worked uh, way easier with, uh, without as many headaches than logging in from a Citrix uh, portal on a remote desktop somewhere. I uh, I did actually manage because it drove me nuts to um use Auto Hotkey to when I would hit Alt Tab and if Citrix was highlighted it would send alt tab to my remote computer instead of on my computer. Otherwise I'd be toggling off of it. Um, and that was one that I was really glad I figured that out because um, yeah, I use alt tab a lot and moving between programs. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that was fun. Absolutely. Joe. Yeah, it was. <laughs> bye. Yeah. Bye.